There is one thing I can promise you. There will be dragons in this video. Hey guys, in my last budget tablet review, which is coincidentally listed in here, I've asked for one thing. I wanted to have a 5 GHz band in Wi-Fi. Well, Dragon Touch K10 actually comes with that, so uh, let's uh, take a look at this tablet closer and see if that's enough to sell me on that budget option. Dragon Touch guys reached out to me to take a closer look at K10. This is the tablet in question, so I thought, why not? It's another budget tablet, I, I'm pretty much sure what to expect, right? So let's get started. First of all, I was presently surprised because actually the back of the tablet is uh, made of metal, apart from those two plastic strips at the top and at the bottom. So that's nice improvements on a, well, a budget otherwise tablet. This device, it's, uh, you can grab it for about £100 or $120, depending on Amazon sales. Before I even powered it on, I took a closer look at the I.O. as well, and there's a couple of surprising features. First of all, you've got a, a 3.5mm jack for audio, which is nice. There's a couple of buttons, including a reset pinhole. I really hope I don't have to use that very often. And mini display port if you want to cast screen onto a different display. That's quite surprising. Unfortunately, extra points are being taken away for not including USB Type-C as a charging port. You still have to deal with micro USB. I guess we're not moving into 2020 after all. There is an also option for SD card, but uh, this thing, uh, you see, this is how you open it and it's terrible. But yeah, it supports SD card so you can increase the build-in capacity uh, up to 120 gigs. Okay, not too bad. I only wish that cap was slightly better and implemented. Moving on, there are two cameras which are in the center position, which is nice, and the speakers, although located at the back, I sense problems there. Another thing that I've noticed was factory glued on screen protector. Now you can remove this, and I did because I hate those things, but it's not a smart idea because unfortunately this tablet doesn't come with a glass screen. The glass is covered by a plastic screen which is quite prone to scratches, something I didn't think of at first and I found later once the scratches started to present itself. So do yourself a favor and leave this off. While I'm powering this thing on, let's talk about specs. Now, this is a budget tablet and it comes with 4-core 1.3 GHz processor. It's not much, it's not going to be lightning fast, but it will do most of the work done okay. Once the device is powered, we can marvel at 11.1 uh, IPS display with not bad viewing angles. Now, this is not a 1080p display, so you're dealing with 1280 by 800 resolution, which uh, gives you about 213 pixels density on this device. It's acceptable. It's a budget device, I'm not going to complain at this point. Moving on, in the connectivity section, we have obviously Bluetooth, GPS, and Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi comes with two bands. You have 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band, which is nice. The device is preloaded with Android 9 right now, and comes with minimal bloatware, so you only get third-party FM radio, camera, and voice recorder app. I should also mention that this is not a stock launcher. If you flip the device to the side, you'll notice that it does not behave like one, and in fact, it's not a Google launcher. However, it's been really nicely implemented, and it retains all the options you would expect from the Google uh, launcher, so it's not too bad. K10, it's a budget option with all four cores being set at 1.3 GHz. I wasn't really expecting much performance in terms of gaming. However, for casual games, it's just enough. In Minecraft, I had to decrease the chunk loading distance to have a smooth experience. However, sprite games like Don't Starve were performing just fine and I was able to enjoy myself for a moment. With CPU being set at 1.3 GHz, you're probably not going to get a lot of performance out of it. 
some apps would take a moment to load, especially changing videos on YouTube. However, once the video was loaded, there was no problem with playback at all. Same goes for websites. Scrolling up and down long websites, probably not the greatest experience due to refresh rates. However, the apps and websites were displayed correctly, so I don't really have a problem there. Another thing I would like to mention is a battery. It's 6000 milliamps and this device boasts up to 8 hours of working time and I tend to agree I've actually watched a 4 and a half hour tutorial on this device with the percentage of the battery going down only to about 40% which is decent. Enough with the praise, let's talk about what's wrong with this. First of all, the sound. Unfortunately, this thing sounds terrible. The speakers are at the back, which doesn't help anything. And in all honesty, if you ever left your headphones on a table with the music playing out loud, this is basically how this device sounds. What's more exciting than talking about the home appliances, especially appliances that do stuff so you don't have to. And today I'm going to talk about... You are expected to either use the 3.5 mil jack or use the Bluetooth with a decent uh, Bluetooth speaker instead. Honestly, listening to anything on this tablet is its a headache. Next on the list are the cameras. Well, front-facing camera is 1.9 megapixel, which is just enough to have your regular Skype conversation or a Zoom meeting, if that's what you're into. It's nothing spectacular. The camera app performs okay, and the videos, well, let's just take a look. If you allow plenty of light, you're going to have a decent experience in terms of voice calls, etc. However, the rear-facing camera, the main 8 megapixel, oh, I think it's on pair with audio, is genuinely bad. First of all, the videos are locked to 720p. There is no way of increasing the video resolution, even if the camera sensor is 8 megapixels. Second of all, the sensor itself is terrible. Even in a picture-taking mode, it would not expose the picture correctly. It fails to see a pink color and it's generally really bad camera. When you look at the sky, this is a gray sky and it's just overexposing it constantly, which makes no sense. And this is not just using the default camera. Look what happens when I aim at pinks. Again, overexposed. Those are pink flowers and the red flowers. That makes no sense. I could not believe that I'm actually saying this, but the front-facing camera on this tablet is much better than the rear shooter. And it's like, why? Dragon Touch K10 looked really promising with a metal backplate, dual band Wi-Fi, and inexpensive price. However, it came short with really terrible audio and, well, unusable camera. This is why it's really hard for me to recommend this device unless you have a specific use in mind that won't require a camera or audio on this device, as long as you're gonna look after the screen. So guys, if you are looking for a display panel for home automation dashboard, this might not be a terrible idea. However, if you are looking for a tablet that will serve you on a daily basis, consider the weak points when picking Dragon Touch K10. Okay, I think we both know what you're dealing with, so I'm just going to say, if you're interested, in the description of this video you're gonna find a link where to get the tablet if you fancy one. As for now guys, I do not have a posting schedule, so uh, the best way to keep in touch, just follow the links on social media below and you'll get notification when there is a video or article out. I do both. So yeah, I'm not going to teach you how YouTube works, you probably know that very well by now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. Dragon guys. Ta <laughs> Dragon guys. <laughs> Dragons. Dragons message me. <laughs> it's unfortunate. <laughs> it's unfortunate that Dragon touch feels more like a slap on the face than a gentle touch of a dragon.